52 courses available. I think in the last year it was around uh, 10, over 10 that were added. Um, so that's new MEA courses and updates to the existing courses. Uh, in terms of the usage, let me just confirm this. Uh, yeah, platform growth. Um, so this is a bit outdated, it's from May 2024, uh, but it's around uh, 72,000 users. So that goes to what Evo was mentioning on this being a, a significant uh, portion of the, I guess, the server traffic. Um, and of those 72,000 users, it's 160,000 enrollments because users can enroll to multiple courses. Um, and there's, yeah, I think Steve, so you can see it's, it's pretty significant, uh, not uh, consistent, sorry, uh, growth. Uh, there was an uptick in 2020, which we would attribute to COVID because a lot of people all of a sudden had to figure out what, uh, what to do online. Um, but yeah, it's well received by the, by the MEAs. I think it's a resource that's a lot more convenient and uh, in a lot of cases economical than the alternatives. Um, and it's uh, one of the main assets is it ties into the content on the either on the Informia platform itself. It really drives traffic to the site um, because it's, it's just popular with users. Um, it's not an enormous overhead for us. And it's nice to see, for, I think foremost, it's nice to see all of this MEA content in one place. And then we're even moving a bit towards the cross cutting courses where MEAs collaborate with each other, um, which you can't really have on another platform that existed I'm aware of at the point. Um, so the developments in the last year, so, so we basically have an introductory course for every MEA um, and that's that's per, uh, done in cooperation with the MEA secretariats. They usually produce the tree, the text itself for the course. Um, and then we're moving to these secondary courses. So either if that's a more thematic course like on compliance uh, or a more technical course, like there was this course in the last year on capacity building for BRS chairs. So quite targeted um, or even technical courses for Ramsar uh, uh, participation in this scientific and technical review body that's not even available to the public. So that's the direction that the MEAs are, are going. Um, and then we're accommodating that by in a number of developments that I'll get to uh, on the platform. But also, uh, like Eva said, they had a wish list of recommendations on the steering committee. And at this point, that wish list is a lot more than we can accommodate. But um, so I think we have to kind of be selective of what we can actually do, um, but also demonstrates that they yeah, are. Are uh, that they get something out of the platform. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I, uh, I'm just pulling up a Word document that I would prepared here, if I can. Um, I wasn't able to incorporate this into the Prezi because I had some issues, but so we had, uh, last week we had sort of a dedicated working group of, uh, of just the MEA focal points. Uh, oh, sorry, the MEA focal points that are interested in e-learning uh, and tried to get a sense of what they have in the pipeline for the next year. Um, so I'll just go over that quickly if that's okay. So I'm still collating it uh, because some of it's work that's in progress, some of it's work that's scheduled, um, but that gives you an idea of kind of the volume and the character of the courses that they're, that, uh, and the basically what we would need from our team to be able to meet that. Um, so from Basel, Rotterdam and Stockholm conventions, they have four different courses. Uh, this is on SDGs, on national implementation plans, um, on more detail on the, the Rotterdam Convention, kind of just a secondary, more detailed course, uh, and on enforcement, as well as a number of language versions within each of those. And so they typically uh, develop their courses with UNITAR. So some of those are on the UNFCC Learn platform. Some of them are on other platforms. Uh, but the content is already there that for, for these courses is the question of how do we duplicate that content um, on our platform so that it's available to this different set of users. Um, then they don't necessarily have to go to Unitar every time if they have minor, minor changes. Um, but of course, it has a, a development cost for us as well. And there's a drawback to creating duplicates rather than interlinkages between these platforms, because if you update one version, you don't always necessarily remember to update the other. There's a background discussion we had on on single sign on API between the platforms, but I don't get to go into detail with that because it was kind of Unitar wasn't ready to Unitar go forward with that. Ready. Yeah, <laughs> but just for context, um, CITES has three courses that I, that I understand. Um, so 
we have a long-standing agreement with it, or sorry, I shouldn't say uh, we, but uh, Informia has a long-standing agreement with Zoe that does a lot of content management work and, and specializes in e-learning um, and has done a lot of e-learning. So they have contracted directly on one course on transport of specimens that I, th I understand is existing and, and near its final stages. Uh, and as I understand, I need to uh, still to be confirmed on the specifics, but I think they have two additional ones, one on CITES appendices and one on uh, the compliant, and then uh, another agreement to update the introductory course to introduce some new content on legal acquisition findings and some other more specific things to CITES. Um, just going through kind of bulldozing through quickly, but just to give you an idea of the, of the, um, of what's in, in progress. Uh, CBD has three courses uh, that they want to introduce. One is the introduction on access and benefit sharing. One is on establishing measures to implement the Nagoya protocol. And one is on the ABS clearinghouse, which is a good example of this kind of niche that's really more for national focal points. Doesn't necessarily need to be super available or advertised to the public, but it's still useful to have somewhere. Uh, so these three courses actually are already developed on our test instance. Um, it's uh, just a question now of moving them you over to, to the Peter? to the live version, of the CBD. Uh, sure. Maybe the new uh, uh, page, the new um, uh, how do you say uh, treaty section? Yeah. Uh, of the yeah. Um. So this the 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 bottleneck is the the counterpoint. Uh, Alex Rafalovich and CBD is on sick leave. Uh, I I understand. I'm not sure how long that will be. Um, but once once they're ready, then we're ready to migrate those three courses to the live, and that will be the first instance of where we roll out these uh, MEA sections, which I'm going to get to a bit under future developments. Um, so at, with this additional volume of either really specific courses or even courses that are for NFPs and aren't really all that targeted to the public, um, rather than have five new courses for CBD that that kind of dilutes the biodiversity section, um, then we've created these subsections for, for MEAs so that they can store whatever kind of more particular courses there. Uh, so this is finished from OtoWeb. This is what the section would look like. It's the same theme, essentially. Uh, they can have both their introductory courses and uh, and their more public major courses that are on the homepage here, but then also these, these more specific ones like the intro to access and benefit sharing, uh, and then whatever affiliated maybe uh, um, uh, sections that are on their own uh, servers over here. So it's just more tailored to whatever they want to have over there. Um, so the work is done. They're migrating that to live in the next week. And then the first candidate will be CBD because they already have these three courses. Um, then just a few more. There's Ramsar. So this is basically things that are have already are a little bit in the works. Um, there's also kind of nice to have in the next year. But uh, Ramsar has a training workshop on, workshop on wetlands inventories. Um, so that's already moving forward in the first workshops in September. Uh, it's going to be over three years, and they want to translate some of that material into an online format just so they'll have it for future workshops and for people that they couldn't afford to have attend or couldn't attend for whatever reason. Um, the Asia Pacific Regional Office, which is the most involved regional office, uh, they have a number of courses that they produced uh, for lawyers and judges in Asia Pacific, uh, intro course and a... Uh, and now an intermediate course. Uh, they got some funding uh, to redo their workbooks. So that's a small thing, but just to mention. Um, then UNECE ECLAC. Um, this is a good example of the SDGs working together on these cross-cutting thematic courses. They produced this along with us, this SDG 16 course, SDG 16 slash Rio 10 access principles. Um, and so they're doing an update to incorporate the Eskazu entry into force and, and, and updates on our house, which would entail some language updates as well. Uh, UNFCCC has a course on another platform that we want to replicate. We already have most of the elements there. Uh, BBNJ, they had requested a translation. They had a donor, I think, um, Andy, you were copied on that email, and uh, Angela, I'm not sure if you were also. Um, but it's basically they have an offer of, of I think it was 70,000 USD. So we're costing what it would cost to translate if we did it for them. 
uh, roughly from what I've done of the translation tables, it would be about 61,000, including ours. But so we need to get back to them in the next uh, couple weeks to see if we go forward with that. And then very lastly, sorry, I know it's a long list. Um, there was kind of the wish list of recommended courses from the steering committee. So this is a course on GMOs that would draw from CBD, the UNECE, uh, Almaty guidelines, plant treaty, and probably IPPC. Uh, they had suggested a course on the interaction with scientific platforms, uh, between scientific platforms and MEAs. Uh, so looking at IPBES, IPCC, and SPP, I'm not sure what the last one is actually. Um, and then third, a course on Indigenous peoples, which um, even my mission later could could mesh well with some requirements that we have in terms of uh, of uh, yeah work output on gender. Um, in terms of updates to the e-learning platform, uh, maybe I'll just actually bring this document over because there's not too much to show here. Uh, what we've done in the last year is update to the new version. One of the uh, review to um, reporting and dashboards, the big thing was an update to a new course page and theme and the MEA sections that I just mentioned. Um, and then we have a list of pending updates. Uh, they're already costed. There's 110 hours uh, in the Odo Web PO remaining. The limiting factors here are the alignment of my time, Odo Web's time, and they have a subcontract in Moodle time uh, that were all available at the same time. But they're scheduled, um, so I won't go through. But uh, yeah, that's kind of everything that's remaining for the development of the platform. Actual, yeah, not content or additional courses, but developments and change to the navigation, et cetera. Um, in terms of our own work, priorities, translations, we have some translations that are almost ready. We have more translations that we translated in the past when we had a certain amount of funding that we had to spend and we knew at some point we'd use them. But what's pending is still to integrate those translations into these actual interactive modules and make them live and everything that's involved in that. Uh, sometimes these translations aren't complete, so you have often they aren't, so you have to go back for a second round to to get whatever you missed with UNAN translation services. Um, course updates to the modernized theme. One of the big developments we had was an update to this new course page theme. What's remaining is to apply that retroactively uh, to retrofit basically these old courses into this new theme. Uh, so 10 are completed with the consultant Abdul that we have through OdoWeb. Um, we have budgeted for maybe four to five additional, uh, but that's going to tie in with the to work uh, to determine what Raluca is able to take on, uh, both with her her capacity and uh, and I guess what her what her priorities are um, in terms of uh, content management work on the e-learning platform. Um, this is just a small thing. It's on the list, but don't need to go into detail. Uh, and then support to MEAs. So we have this new MEA section. We need to actually then set up the sections for the ones that want them. So already we have CBD. Uh, we're quite sure CITES and BRS will want a section soon too. And then of course more will be available on request, but then we need to schedule our time to be able to set that up. Okay. Um, and then just general things, requests for statistics, troubleshooting. Uh, yeah. Um, last one, next steps and considerations. So I mentioned uh, Luca's kind of being thrown into this, but we'll have some conversations over the next week and then she can dip her toes in and see um, mixed metaphors, but um, uh, see what she's able to take on. If there's a certain amount that she's not available to take on, then we need to ter determine who is if we extend this existing consultancy or how we do that. So this is basically the work of creating courses and putting translations into courses, responding to MBA requests, troubleshooting from uh, student requests, et cetera. 